Have you ever wondered what would happen if you take a magnetron, take the magnets off, submerge it under oil, and then run high voltage alternating current into it from a high frequency, high power flyback transformer? Stay tuned to find out. Today I'm going to talk about this uh, magnetron which I've stripped the magnets off and only left the tube behind. I had many many comments on the videos that I posted generating microwaves and also generating x-rays with this tube. To generate the x-rays I used a high voltage power supply which was DC generated by a voltage multiplier at 40,000 volts to show that this tube could produce x-rays. One of the questions that I got was, what about using alternating current or even rectified high frequency AC? So I want to address that comment in this video. So in order to do that, I have a homemade flyback transformer. I'm driving it with this Variac here. This is a two kilowatt Variac. I have a driver, which is, this is the driver circuitry for the flyback. And this flyback can put out tens of thousands of volts. So I've connected the output of this flyback across this, across this magnetron, this stripped down magnetron. And we're gonna use this Geiger counter. So let me first turn it on. So now it's running on audio. Now I'm gonna turn on the inverter. That's what you can hear in the background. And now I'm going to crank up the voltage across the tube to see if we can generate any x-rays. So right now I have the voltage cranked up. I'm not seeing any x-ray production. Okay, I'm going to go up further. And what I'm getting instead is arcing and no x-ray production. You can see the arcing occurring right there and there. So that's the limiting problem using AC in air. So in order to get around this problem of arcing, why don't we test this out under oil? Let's begin. We're not powering the filament, so this is running as a cold cathode. We're going to submerge the whole thing under oil. This is mineral oil. Here we go. The whole thing is now under oil, so that should reduce the chance of any arcing. The arcing prevents enough voltage building up across the cathode and anode to generate any x-rays. Let's explore why you don't need to rectify the power going into this. This is AC that's going in and not DC. Uh, you think about the uh, cathode as like a filament and it's a very sharp, small area structure. And you think about the anode as a large structure here. So when you put AC across this, high voltage AC, because the electric field on the cathode is much higher because it's, it's a small surface area compared to the electro, electric field on the anode, which is a large surface area, electrons are most likely to fly off the cathode towards the anode and this will function as a cold cathode rectifier. So electrons will shoot off preferentially in this direction, and the net flow of current in terms of electron flow is gonna be from the cathode to the anode, even though that you're putting alternating current across this. And so this is functioning as a rectifier because of the vacuum and because of the differences in the surface area between the cathode and the small, uh, I mean the anode and the small cathode here. So that would be one reason why this might produce x-rays with alternating current, but we have not yet established that. So let's go ahead and complete the experiment. I'm cranking up the AC voltage right now. There you go, picking up x-rays now.
Again, a lot of x-ray production. Okay, I'm trying to slowly increase the voltage, but it's hard, it just jumps. Oh no, it looks like I've totally overloaded the counter. As you just saw there, that produced a ton of x-rays and it overwhelmed the meter, which gave an error. So, don't need any fancy rectification, just use an AC power supply, a high voltage flyback, and put your magnetron under oil to prevent any arc over on the ceramic, and you've got yourself a very strong X-ray source. Okay, what I'm attempting to do now is to very, very slowly increase the voltage so I don't overwhelm the Geiger counter like I did in the, in the last experiment. Okay, I turned off the annoying alarm and sound. I had to quickly crank down the voltage as it was shooting above 100 millirems per hour. So this was producing more than 100 millirems per hour and it was setting off um, an overcount error. And I'm sure it could produce probably a rem per hour, which is very dangerous. And that's with the filament not even being turned on. So with the filament on, I'd hate to think what well, this would produce in terms of x-ray output, but it's gonna be a lot. And I'm sure it could be used to make some pretty interesting x-ray pictures. That may be an experiment that I try in the future, but right now, I think safety is gonna be my priority with this thing until I found, find a way of operating it remotely. Thanks for watching, folks, and uh, hope you enjoyed this video on running a uh, magnetron tube under oil.